<laughs> okay. Where is David? He's here. Uh, right? Am I not? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, That's, okay. Can you guys hear me? We got you. We got you. This, yes. is, this is me tapping the microphone. Only only I can hear it. We can't. We can't. No. Anyway. Hey, uh, that was amazing. I thought, like, okay, something's going to go wrong. <laughs> but I studied all the systems checks, and Slack, Slack was just gone. It was gone. <laughs> I got Slack error messages I've never seen before. Anyway, uh, hey, I've been watching you guys. Thank you. And really excited to be here and talk a little bit about contributing in Redwood.js. But um, yeah, this is fun and way, way to go. Zach and I did get to meet briefly Pretty about fun. a week ago, so more to come. But um, yeah, we were excited. We saw Zach uh, do a, a Redwood masterclass, and that's when we reached out. And, you know, we're really excited about Mint being and happy to be here. Guys, I have too many things to talk about because I, I get excited. Let's so go. I, I got I to gotta do this. I got to get it out. Yeah, do it. And it's going to be right class. And, and then we'll loop around. So Monarch, come back and join me for those who are listening. Uh, we're going to talk about contributing to Redwood. And I'm going to talk a lot about the how. And then Monarch's going to join me toward the end. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the whys and how it might apply to all of you JavaScript boot camp uh, Olympicers. I think Olympians would be the right word. But <laughs> I like Olympicers. Sounds better. <laughs> Olympicers. And um, and then also there's a Redwood JS meetup happening after this, so there's a lot of fun things going on, and I'm gonna I'm gonna dive in, but I'll I'll catch you guys both maybe even in a little bit, 20 minutes. Yeah. 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 All right. So uh, David Price is my name, and I'm a part of the Redwood JS core team. Uh, you can find me on the internet at, at the David Price. I like how I capitalized my P in there, so you really know. But there's a, a lot of other David Prices out there, most of them more famous than I. Uh, but if you look for the David Price, you'll find me. We've got some links I'm going to go through today, but main our, our main website is redwoodjs.com. That's where you find documentation, um, a lot of links to the communities on the forums and uh, Discord chat. Uh, but most importantly, we'll be talking about the tutorial today, and that's found at redwoodjs.com. Uh, the main project code base is at redwoodjs-redwood on GitHub. And our community forums, which are a hopping, vibrant, lively place, see hopping, pun intended, uh, is at community.redwoodjs.com. So I'm, I'll show you some of those websites and go to those links um, throughout this, this brief talk. But I wanted you to have those up front to know where we're going to be going. So... Uh, we need to accomplish a few things here in about 20 minutes. And um, one is I, I need to introduce you to Redwood JS. It's going to be way too fast and just a teaser, but I want to show you what that is before I talk about why you would even want to become a part of that project and join the community as a contributor. Uh, we have a lot of people, surprisingly so, that tell us Redwood was the first project they've ever contributed to in open source, which is phenomenal. And it's not just people new in their careers developers, it's people who've been developers, they're seasoned, they're senior devs, and Redwood was the first time. So we love that, that gets us excited. It's motivating and invigorates the whole community. Um, but we also think a lot about why that happens and how to make it happen more often. So I want to focus during this talk not just on the mechanics, like what is it to create a good issue, to find issues you might be able to tackle and submit a PR and get the code merged. I think there's, there's wonderful talks on how to do that, including just good GitHub documentation. But I want to talk about the hows in terms of what does it look like to become a part of the community and how do you think about that. So that's where we're going to go in this talk. And first, we're going to start with Redwood.js. Uh, Redwood.js is a full stack, Jamstack framework. Hello, jargon. Really quick, what this means is it's full stack. It's got a front end and a back end. Your front end is web. Uh, for a lot of you, it's going to be familiar. It's, it's React. And your back end means there's an API, and that's GraphQL. There's a few other technologies there. But it's a framework, so it's all integrated. And hopefully in Redwood, it's, it's really well integrated into a seamless developer experience so that you can build applications. And the Jamstack part is, that speaks to, well, there's a lot of things there, but it speaks to infrastructure and process. So Jamstack is about uh, this, this idea of serverless, but what that means in infrastructure is uh, your web assets become static files that live on a content delivery network uh, around the world when you deploy this to production. And your API lives on these serverless 
a Lambda function. So AWS Lambda is where it would live if you deployed Netlify. And uh, they, don't, they don't persist. It's not a server that's running all the time. When, you're, when the web needs to talk to the API and have some business logic run or get some data from the database, um, this, the Lambda function spins up quickly, provides the information, um, does the work that needs to be done, and gives that to the website, and then it goes away. Um, and so that's what a, a Jamstack infrastructure looks like. It's, it's very high performant. It um, has a lot of security benefits. And it's relatively, well, especially when getting started, it's really inexpensive to get going. So there's a lot of advantage to it. In the process, there's this wonderful life cycle where you work locally, you commit with Git, you push that to a repo like GitHub, and there's all this automation that happens when you push that it just deploys magically and lives on the internet. And it's super fun. All right, so that's what Redwood JS on a high level is. But let's get quickly into a demo. I'm looking. Ah, oh, we're okay on time. So this is going to be way too fast of a demo. And where this is coming from is the. I'll go back to show you that slide if you want to follow along. I didn't get there, but um, demo time. RedwoodJS.com the tutorial. So this is the Redwood tutorial. And it's a, a wonderful walkthrough that it will take you through the features of Redwood, but it also it, it lets you understand and experience the DX of building a full stack application with Redwood. So the code that I'm showing you here is, uh, is the code from a, the Redwood tutorial project where you'll build a blog. And I'm already into the tutorial, so I've, I've skipped ahead a little bit here, which I've got all my screens up. <clears throat> and um, uh, we're going to go through this really quickly. I just want to show you a few really cool things that Redwood does that feel like magic. So this is the code base. You'll notice, right, here's a folder for the API. We're using Yarn workspaces. So it's a mono repo. So everything lives in one place. And the API is going to have uh, all these things. This is what I talk about, the functions. This is all the business logic. This is where a lot of the GraphQL is happening. Prisma is a tool that we use. Um, and uh, Prisma is a company as well as a tool. And this is how we talk to the database. This schema.prisma file is where database models are created. Um, Prisma helps us communicate with the database, establish the connection, and also manage migrations and change over time. And then web is maybe more familiar to a lot of you, but this is where uh, a lot of components are going to live and all of our React as well as other configuration, our routes file, it's all inside of there. So, how do you get working with a Redwood project? We work a lot at the command line. And apologies, my <laughs> this, this formatting doesn't work on a large screen. But um, the first thing I want to do, I want to spin up a local development server. And I have a database. So I'm using command line down here to say, uh, this is yarn, the RW is abbreviation for Redwood, DB, and up. I want to create a local database, and I already have tables and things defined, so I'm migrating those with Prisma. And I should have, oh yeah, it's going to go slower because I'm, I'm streaming now. So maybe it won't, maybe it won't go at all. There we go, going, going. Oh, this is going to be fun. It's going to be really slow. My computer comes to a halt when we, when I uh, do a live stream, so I might skip around some things a little bit more quickly if it's going to take some time. And that's it. Normally, that takes about 0 0.05 seconds. Um, and then I would run my dev server. And this is what uh, spins up the API and the web locally uh, so that I can run on localhost 8910. This will open for you automatically. And 8910 is, is easy to uh, remember. So all right, we'll see what we can do here, given things are running a little bit slowly. My lightning demo is not so lightning. When my computer is running really slow. Let's try one more time. So this is working into the tutorial, and these are some things you'd be building along the way. I'm going to take a copy break while that spins up. How's this for lightning? <laughs> I'm, I'm now not meeting the expectations I just said. All right, I promise you that a local host would spin up there. Um, my computer is going amazingly slow. Lee. There we go. Come on. Come on, you know you want to. All right. So the other things I wanted to show you, well, how are we going to do this? Okay, you're just going to have to trust me on a few things here. But see that empty 
container down there, that's where we'd want to add some, uh, that's where we'd want to be adding some blog post information. Um, we actually, sorry, we want to add some blog posts. And in order to do that, typically in React, you'd have to create all kinds of components, right? Because I need to create a blog post. We're creating a blog here. And that empty needs to be um, some, some blogs. I would, some blog entries. I'd want to create some posts. I want to edit some posts. I want to delete some posts. And so what that adds up to is a whole lot of code that I want to create. Well, I know in Redwood what my database model needs to be for a blog post. And it's right here. Right, so this is what I need to do. I need to have an ID title body and create a that. And so in Redwood, how that would work out is I would say Redwood. I've got to even yarn. Redwood. Generate. This thing called a scaffold. And that's going to take my post model and my schema and create all kinds of files. So what's happening right now, really slowly, it'll be very fast for you, I, I promise is a whole bunch of files that didn't exist before are now being generated. You can't see any of that, but a lot of command line output, right? So all these files that are being created so that I can come over here. Um, I was also going to show you the login. Authentication is incredibly simple in Redwood. That's another generator that we have. And with that generator, uh, you can wrap. Actually, I'll show you that kind of quickly here in routes.js, right? So with a generator, I add authentication to my project. I'm not going to show you that now. I've got to go to the tutorial. And I would wrap my routes in private. Um, unauthenticated is a redirect to home if you're not logged in. And that gives me access now to all these admin pages in my app. And then look at this. Huh? So when I go to admin posts, I get this beautiful UI, maybe. It allows me to create posts. Hey there. There's a post. Right? I could edit posts. I could delete posts. I won't do. You know what? Everything's more fun with rockets. And if I go back to the home page, now all those posts are going to show up in what once was an empty array, right? So moving very quickly, getting to focus on actually building the things I want to focus on. Uh, there's a Tailwind config generator I was going to show you. We're not going to do that now, but that would make this look really pretty really quickly. OK, so that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, well, actually, I want to show you a few more things. But go check out the tutorial. Um, and that's where you'll get to experience all of these things and more on Redwood. Uh, but, but that's what Redwood's about. People are excited about it and joining the community and, and wanting to become contributors to Redwood. So, um, so then my next question is, why would you want to become a contributor? So say you find a project and you're excited about it. Um, what are the things motivating people to become? And so hopefully some of this is obvious, but Joining open source, building anything, is a wonderful opportunity to learn. And there's just something about us as humans. We enjoy the curiosity. Um, but and you get to learn, and there's all of this code that's online. It's, it's, it's got to be one of the largest libraries right, of, of people creating and building. All this code that's just available for you to go and learn and read. And it's all available to you on this magical thing called the Internet. Um, but you also get to make progress. You get to create something and develop mastery, and that's really rewarding. And even more so now with the new tools for, for open source collaboration, there's an opportunity to be a part of a great team. And, and that's when I think of highlights in my life, it, it is always with other people working in collaboration. So becoming an open source contributor really is about things that you – you want to experience in your life that are measured in satisfaction and joy. Only that isn't always the case, right? That's actually one of the hard things about becoming a part of a team and other people, it gets messy. So as I mentioned earlier, what I, what I want to talk about is how would you find experiences in, as a, in contributing to open source where you experience more of the satisfaction and joy 
and less of the frustration and stress. It's going to be hard, of course, but um, there are ways to evaluate um, what's happening before you get involved. So what's in the way for most people? Why aren't you an open source contributor? Well, a lot of it is uh, because of time and fear. And, and I can't speak much to the time side of things, although there's no time like quarantine time. Am I right? Huh? So now's the time. Uh, but the fear side, we can dig into a little bit more because note I didn't add anything about skills and being an exceptional rock star developer because actually anyone at any level of skill uh, can get involved in open source projects, right? But, but we are, I am, afraid of doing it wrong. And that's a lot about my code and my skill, but it's also a lot about the culture and the kind of collaboration, the process that's happening, right? I, I want to make sure I'm doing things the right way so there's a fear that gets created before I can step in and contribute and participate. And I've talked to people early in their career, and I've experienced myself, talked to other people that are decades into their career, and we all experience the same fear when we're trying to become a part of a new community, right? So what do we do about that? All right, let's talk about the culture of collaboration and how to understand and evaluate these things. And I've got, so Monarch, I know you're there. I need another five minutes, and then we'll kind of wrap up for five. But um there's three things if you want to understand and evaluate, right, a community around a project that you want to get involved in. And those three things are you've got to start with empathy. You need to ask the questions about is the structure of the project good enough? And I'm looking for certain characteristics of a collaborative culture. And are those evident in the things that I see online? So let me show you some examples of those things. Okay. So the first thing is about empathy. And I, I wanted to specifically direct empathy toward the people that are the, the primary contributors and primarily involved in a project. And who you can find how you can find who those are, I went to, let me boost the size here a little bit. Okay, so I went to the Redwood JS org on GitHub. And here I'm looking at uh, the repositories. You can see the people that are involved in this project. So now I could put some faces with some names. For Redwood, we actually have a, a a core contributing community that's of about 30 people, so this doesn't represent them all. Um, but, but you wanna find out who's involved in the projects. So I have a really good friend who maintains an open source project, and something you need to understand, he has over one billion downloads per year on his project. And he and a couple other people are the maintainers, and that's pretty typical. Projects typically have one, maybe two or three people that are maintaining. And when you have a billion downloads, if you were to put yourself in his shoes, you would realize he is super busy. And if you look around at issues and PRs and, and where he's involved in the project, you would see that you would better understand him and the project as a whole as you've understood that like the volume is really high. So, so first taking a step to ask, what is it like to be someone who's helping contribute to this project? Is, is a really important first step to evaluating the culture and the collaboration. And then the second step is structure. So structure is really important because if, if the project, if the, if the community doesn't have some structure, it doesn't need to be perfect, but just good enough structure, then it's gonna be harder to get involved. It's gonna be harder to know where to contribute. So ways you can find if there's structure. So on the Redwood JS uh, website, uh, we have a roadmap and that was right up here. I clicked on this link. And that gives a sense of prioritization, where people are focusing their energies, and also a sense of timeline. Uh, so what to do um, and when to do it. And inside of the docs, you want to look for um, contributing documentation. So is there anything written and given about uh, how to um, participate in a project in terms of what is the process, um, where is code located? So find find things about contributing. So contributing guides, um, and this lives on our redwoodjs.com site, and also um, <clears throat> it lives inside of our repo. Um, the projects, the roadmap, if you look on the GitHub, you can find the projects inside of, um, uh, right, there's every roadmap item relates to a project. If you also look through the issues inside of a repository, you should see a lot of great labels for a repository that 
Uh, so help one is a good one to give you a sense of structure and organization uh, as well as milestones. Um, so that was the that was the parts about the structure. And those are things I look for when I try to find my way into a project. Right. So start with empathy. What's it like to be someone who's contributing to this project? Um, look for some structure that's going to help you understand where to get plugged in and what things that the community values to work on. And then the last piece here is the evident characteristics of a collaborative culture. And here are the characteristics to look for. And you know what? Now that I'm here in the talk, I should have spent most of my time talking about these things because collaboration requires these kind of things to work well. And if you are joining a community, you want to make sure it has these ingredients before you get involved because if it doesn't have these ingredients, odds are you're going to have limited experiences of satisfaction and joy when you're participating as a collaborator. collaborator. So look for gratitude and encouragement. Look for generosity. Are people generous in their assumptions and how they interpret things? Are they generous in how they help each other? And also look for evidence of recognition amongst the community. And really quickly, some ways you can go and find out if that is happening is you can look on the community forums if a project has those. This also happens in the issues, issues in the PRs, right? So how are people engaging with each other? And are they doing it in a way where they're being generous with each other and they're helping each other? Um, you can see that evident in pull requests. And here's the trick on pull requests. Don't look at open pull requests. Look at closed pull requests. And look for pull requests that had a whole lot of conversation. Look at that, 47 comments back and forth. And, and look and read through the kind of interaction and dialogue they had with each other. And look for those characteristics that I just mentioned. And then um, last part on recognition, right? So if you want to see if there's recognition, just check it out. So on our README inside of the project for Redwood, we have over 110 collaborators, collaborators right now contributed to one of the three main Redwood repositories. And we do our best to make sure that everyone, no matter how big or small their contribution, um, has been recognized for the work they're doing. Because that's the kind of thing that makes us all a community together. Oh man, I wish I could keep talking here. Hey, Monarch, are you are you around? Or do you want to jump in here? We've got a few more minutes. I know I've missed a million things. I wanted to make sure that uh, you could could come in and highlight some things that you thought were important for the the mint bean and the the boot camp Olympics community. I'm around. I'm a square. I'm a triangle. I'm a can, can you tell? Shape. Like I, I'm I get fired up about this stuff. So I, I should have started at the end. I wanted people to see Redwood. But um, yeah, you know what? Me. go ahead. It's um, it, it's one of those things that I actually took a screenshot of that slide, the last one that you that, that you put up on, about empathy. So here's what you said: gratitude, encouragement, generosity, recognition. And you know what? Uh, we try our best. Yeah, that one. And we try our best to do this at Mintbean. And I'm taking notes from how Redwood is doing it because um, you guys have it down, and it really shows. I I don't think I've seen like a lot of a lot of open source communities. Um, they unfortunately have a bunch of flame wars on their issues, and none of that. I, I sense none of that energy in Redwood. Um, I did have a question though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How how does this loop back into careers like how, have you seen i've so guilty admission admission of guilt over here um i don't have any major open source contributions and yeah. i look at people who have major open source contributions and i always wonder how how has that affected their careers and i'm sure it's positive but could you could you maybe talk about some tangible benefits of contributing yeah absolutely thank you so i think i could talk about that for a long time so let me let me try to hit it quickly, right? You can go and create your own project, and that's tremendously satisfying, right? And a lot of people do that and create a project in hopes that it will demonstrate that they have the technical savvy savvy to build something useful that other people use, and that's super helpful in a career. That I know people that have gotten wonderful jobs that they love because they took that route. That's really hard, and it takes a lot of time but it can be totally worth it. But what I wanted to highlight here is, in this slide especially, careers don't happen in isolation, right? It's very rare that you're working alone. And if you are, um, 
that's that's probably actually just on the outside looking in. You're working in collaboration. So the things I highlighted here, open source is a wonderful place to practice all the things you need to collaborate well inside of any kind of job, right? And also, it's a great way to practice how to evaluate the culture of collaboration within a company. Because I tell you what, if gratitude and encouragement and generosity and recognition aren't happening across a company, then the collaboration and the personal satisfaction you get from like the collaboration performance is probably going to be really low. So if you can experience these things, both trying to like be a part of them, um, help shape them, advance them in open source, that correlates one to one with exactly the same kind of things you're going to be doing in relationship inside of a career. You know what? It's so. So the way I'm doing it is, I've been wanting to do it my entire career, never got the chance, or never took the initiative. Now um, we're we're starting up a few open source um, initiatives of our own, and the one thing that I that I really want to highlight is software development gives you this opportunity to be a part of something that doesn't happen very often in other careers and professions. And that culture of open source is really, really special. Um, you, I don't think you have it in many other places the way you have it over here. Um, I, I can't think of many other um, highly paid professions where developers actually just like people just want to sit around and talk about code and have fun mm -hmm. while doing it. Like they they actually have fun doing what they do at work. I don't yeah. see that happening a lot. And not taking part in that com community and that culture is just it, you're missing out if you're not. Yeah. And I'm I'm starting to realize that myself. It is it is a lot of fun. And there's a lot of other ways to do this experience too. It doesn't just have to be open source. But I think there's this there's this reciprocal effect that happens and things can resonate. And let's when it clicks and when it works, things can happen really quickly in open source, and it's and it's really fun. So there's this there's this really building effect uh, that you can experience in your career, but also in the projects you participate in. So um, Redwood is one of the I participate in open source on and off throughout my career, uh, but this the Redwood experience because we've all tried it and done it different ways. Um, we're being very intentional in seeding our community to be a kind of place where everything you just talked about is happening because we want it to be high satisfaction, enjoyable. And so that means it's gotta be that way for everybody, right? And accessible where anyone, anywhere could join the project. So, hey, I, I've gotta go jump into a meetup, but this is maybe my most important slide. We will send stickers, Redwood, those are the stickers, to anyone, anywhere in the world. So go to redwoodjs.com forward slash stickers, fill out a form and we would love to I challenge us. So I don't know where you are, uh, but we, we will ship you stickers. Can't guarantee they'll be there in less than a month, but um, come get some stickers. And I've got to jump because we're actually having every other week we do a Redwood JS meetup and that's happening right now. Thanks to you. Uh, Mint Bean is hosting. So that's in a session within Hopin, and um, I'm supposed to be emceeing that. So um, I'm late and I should get going. Well, David, that was amazing. So thank you, David, for that awesome you, presentation. Anna. All right, I'm out. Catch you on All the right. flip side. See you, David.